or under the hashtag C3T on Twitter. All right, welcome. We want to show in how in Austria we're addressing um, the subject of state surveillance. We want to do this by two lines of argumentation. First of all, the abstract apparent threat that is being portrayed bigger than it actually is to give reason to further surveil and then downplay on the other hand the consequences that surveillance has on the regular folks. So we will look at this language that's being used pr very precisely and to understand how surveillance is being justified. Uh, thank you, Angelika, uh, Angelika Anzama. That is our law person amongst us, uh, our advisor. My name is Thomas Lohninger, and we're going to uh, speak on behalf of Epicenter Works. We are a uh, company that is um, maybe mostly known for um, data saving um, and that we took to the European High Courts. So if you don't know us that, you might know us from Net Neutrality uh, with safetyinternet.eu. We pushed for net neutrality in Europe, but Thank you very much. There was a round of applause. But continue to Werner Reiter, my other colleague up here with me. All right, I've never spoken in front of this many people. I'm a little bit nervous. Please help me out. Um, there's a round of applause for him as encouragement. That was not the question. The question was, please raise your hands. Who does not like state surveillance or a state run Trojan horse. Um, everybody's raising their hands, basically. Well, there's a few people. Uh, now I have something for you. We have a video, but we don't have a sound. We'd like to show the video now with sound. We're now listening to a video. Everyone, everyone in the parliament who is pushing back against the kind of security package that we're trying to pass are basically attacking the Austrian public to not have security that other countries already have. All right, that is Wolfgang Zubota, former inner minister, inner minister of inner security, and he uh, basically uh, showed his response to you not wanting to be snooped upon and you're basically being uh, made out to be the attacker onto safety of a state. The emotional blackmail that is part of this um, statement is, a, uh, is, is the real bad thing. So you are uh, bad citizens, he says. Sorry. What is this topic and, and those people who, who know me uh, will know that uh, we've discussed uh, proposed laws um, for Austria in 2017 of the black-red uh, government. We'll come to the current developments, but uh, at the moment it's not all that sure. So, uh, today Sobotka has the second highest um, office in the state and he has, he has, never, uh, he has said it as clearly as uh, no other. And, and here are the, the measures that he wanted that uh, caused us to take action here. So he's, he's asking for uh, networked uh, video surveillance. He wants uh, he wants uh, tickets um, in, in public uh, transport and he wants uh, cars 
tracked. So he, he, wants, uh, he wants all movement of anyone tracked. The thing that was discussed most was the, uh, the, the Trojan uh, software, the, the spy software that, that they wanted to Im employ. Since Snowden, we, uh, we have end-to-end -end -end encryption and uh, uh, and they want to break into it and, and this is why they want a Trojan. This kind of uh, espionage software has been tried to make legal in 2016 uh, when our justice minister wanted to try and, uh, and make it possible and, and we tried to stop it then. Uh, and, we, and it was uh, was taken back before it was even uh, finalized. And, and in 2017, they tried again. But they always want this kind of uh, surveillance. So, so uh, our campaign was uh, to stop this uh, this whole package of surveillance measures. In, uh, in the civil society, we, um, we found many supporters for this. In ganz Österreich Kampagnen. And this campaign covered um, all of Austria, uh, not just uh, the network, <coughs> not, not just Vienna, but um, all towns. We, we made a hotline where you could call politicians and convince them that, uh, that this was a bad idea. Oh, that, that, ex that goes far beyond anything that uh, is uh, compatible with our um, basic rights. And um, we all uh, also called uh, Mr. Buch um, at, at 11 on, on Thursdays. To, to tell them that this wasn't a bad idea. And uh, we also produced a tool with which you could uh, participate in the uh, public survey um, and, and submit your own opinions. So it was proposed, um, there was a, a long debate about it. Und, uh, dann hat man gewartet, bis, uh, then there was a, a long wait until the, until the summer break. And then just before the summer break, the original um, <coughs> proposals were made even worse. So they, they wanted to introduce uh, uh, network censorship and they wanted to have those filters under the guise of um, protecting the youth and, and uh, filtering out pornography. They also wanted to extend uh, mobile catchers and, and, and wanted to extend them to cars. And we, we also had prevented the we had uh, prevented the, um, the, the foot tracker for dangerous people. So um, what we are asking for is protection of um, private schon den Menschenrechten entsprechen. Es ist private, nicht automatisch, dass es grundrechtswidrig ist. Äh, es muss aber die konkrete not, not every form of surveillance um, is automatically contradicting the, uh, the Constitution. Das kann zum Beispiel durchaus auch Sicherheit sein. Aber And uh, there, there must be multiple aspects for this to be compatible. And the, the main aspect is that it needs to be uh, appropriate. And during the whole debate, there's never a justification on how it would improve security and, and the compatibility and, and the uh, appropriateness is never proven. So um, we, we see it as a, as a danger to our freedom and ironically also to our security. So we, we insist that, that all of those things together are checked for their compatibility with our basic rights. So we're going to go back further a bit um, to the very beginning. So what was the uh, starting point for all of this? Uh, the sound is not very good, but it's a historic video and I've got to show you. And I have a very personal example. It's a few years old, back, back then. Uh, Every three weeks, I had like 
basically a dump of shit human shit in front of my house so I put cameras up uh, in front of my house and uh, after that no more shit in front of my doorstep I hope with subtitles uh, it's fine you uh, probably also misunderstood what he was saying mm, our Minister for Inner Security is obviously fighting uh, shit dumps in front of his house with cameras and he doesn't think about why anybody would put a dump in front of his house. And I mean, this is very symptomatic for this kind of debate on security in Austria and probably also for other countries. You try to fight the symptoms with placebos to really speak about the reasons for stuff, which is why we're and which is where we get to politics of emotions. And now we're going to watch the second part of the video. And the surveillance of the camera and that it's only a security feeling and that gives people the feeling of security. So this is a very central kind of um, term that's being used in the debate on security. It's about the subjective security feeling. It used to be um, a feeling for people who fought against this kind of surveillance and today it's the feeling that, that's being used to give reason for implementing measurements like this. I mean, this is obviously not about um, have stopping attacks to happen. This is not about measurements to prevent stuff from happening. And these are all measurements that are being implemented and established in other countries and are not being effectively put to use. But in Austria, yet yeah, we still kind of actively try to use this rhetoric to justify measurements that were undertaken. Uh, we're going to hear another quote from our minister from his last few days in office. We know today that the next attack is being planned. We, know what, we don't know when and we don't know where. And this is also very typical. Uh, it's about protection from very abstract threats instead of concrete evident driven attacks and this is how um, laws are being passed against potential attackers they're not concrete it's about people who are not actually giving any reason to be planning an attack but apparently in the abstract they're being dangerous so in the new uh, agreement, the new parliamental agreement, it says that there needs to be a measurement that you can undertake before stuff even happens. So you have want to start limiting uh, electronic measurements of communication for people who are being potential threats. So, I mean, we could all be potential threats. You can only say that you're against this kind of security package and based on our Minister of Inner Defense, you're basically an attacker onto the democracy of Austria. And the problem with these kind of databases of potential threats is that it's really hard to then afterwards be taken out of these databases. Like, how are you going to prove that you're not a threat any longer when you were there, being put there in the first place on very flimsy kind of evidence? So we've talked about this kind of abstract, yet very big, bad threat. And the measurements that we want to use against this are very small. We're going to watch another video. Oh, we just basically want to close the gap. We just want to close the gap in our measurements of surveillance by using digital means. I mean, it's, it's, it's all about like closing a little tiny gap in the surveillance that we've been using anyways, and then everything is being safe again. That's the thing with the technology. We a lot of times uh, reach the threshold um, of understanding technology and it's kind of like making family policies and not really understanding how families actually work. In this case, it's unfortunately not leading to people um, stopping to make more statements. They are kind of more fired on to do more. We can see more. I mean, we could basically... Uh, the 
have more like people in cybercrime that could like technically uh, uh, look at how what this looks like. All right, uh, thank you very much. I mean, I'm not the really technical experts, but um, I could. Yeah, sorry, I can't explain. So Peter Gretling, uh, who is the boss of the protection of the Constitution, basically the boss, and we should remember this name because he's going to come up later. Uh, very similar is the uh, Vienna she head of the police. So you could look into um, the software being used um, and you could basically look into people's um, private homes and his response to that is kind of like, well, it's, I mean, these are technical measurements and I mean, like, you can't say that these technical measurements aren't possible to execute. And... Um, they're basically um, showing a bit of like technical ignorance, like you basically can't have a fact-driven um, conversation with these people as they um, do not fully understand um, the technicality of things. So their attitude towards this is more that towards of a toy, where they're like, oh, why don't you just give them the toys? Let's just not talk about it for longer. Let's just, uh, now we're going to look at the former Minister of Justice. So if the boss of the BVD thinks these are important measurements, you just have to undertake them. I mean... <laughs> He's like cheering people on to give more applause. Basically, one reacts towards the wishes of the safety of the uh, constitution safety. And he cannot give a response on how this is supposed to technically work. But don't worry. It is for me very curious how the state permanently, where everybody swears an oath on the Constitution, that they're being basically accused of misusing the kind of data. I mean, basically just trust the government because they never misuse data. It doesn't exist, does it, now? I mean, there is multiple examples of data misuse. I mean, I can give you one example where one police officer um, gave a woman that he liked information and data on the current men that she was seeing and on his background. And I mean, like, no, there's no misuse on a state level when it comes to personal data. I mean, you shouldn't just, you shouldn't just trust the state and the government. I personally wouldn't trust um, anybody who uh, defends themselves with uh, arguments like those. Here again, this is Werner Amon, the uh, security speaker in the parliament. He says data protection can, uh, must not be misunderstood and turned into uh, perpetrator's protection. But data protection is a, is a um, foundational right that protects everyone, including uh, perpetrators. Thank um, and, and there's nothing to be misunderstood about it. And secondly, those permissions are permissions to, to investigate, and they, they are directed against either uh, both those that are accused and those that, that, we, um, that we don't yet know. Now, the, uh, the debate on surveillance is uh, characterized by a, by a very diffuse or surprising uh, competition logic. It cannot be that, uh, and, and here comes a, a football analogy. <laughs> Champions League, Regionalliga. Champions League and uh, 
Regional League. Wir haben von Innenminister Sobotka schon gehört, andere Länder hätten das auch und wir bräuchten das. Other countries also have those uh, surveillance capabilities and anderen Ländern, sondern direkt in den Wettbewerb mit Terroristinnen und Terroristen. Das heißt, und we're not going uh, into competition with other countries, but we're going in competition with the terrorists. So we need to um, apply methods that uh, that also the uh, <coughs> the criminals use, but perhaps that isn't what he meant to say. So there's, there's a, a, a strange uh, interpretation of democracy. So here he, um, he states that security is more important than politics. I don't want to not have a political discussion about this, and, and I do not understand why it needs a political agreement on this. Das war Or jetzt mal so die Debatte. Bis dann der Wahlkampf im Sommer 2017 passiert. So that was the debate and then in 2017 uh, weiterhin elections. Zwei sehr beherrschende Themen im innenpolitischen There Diskurs. There were two topics um, in the, uh, internal politics or uh, internal security politics. Um, die SPÖ hat uh, komplett vermieden sich eigentlich in diesem Thema zu positionieren. So the FPÖ um, did not take any stance in this uh, debate. And, and he said he, he didn't want to um, draw this uh, sensible, uh, this uh, delicate topic into the election. And he, he does not want to use it to, uh, to distinguish from uh, the conservatives. Man macht im Wahlkampf gern ein bisschen so wohlfühl, viel gut. So here, here the ÖVP um, try to make people feel good. And they stated that uh, they made it seem like they were against it, but um, they continued with it. There's still no transparency law. Ja, under the new uh, government. Before the elections, they were opposition party and they were against it. And they, they declared it uh, to be the end of the uh, legal law-based state. Hier versucht haben zu illustrieren, ist wie immer wieder vermischt werden die Themen Islam, Migration, so here the, the topics, um, Islam, Migration, uh, Security and Surveillance are, are mixed up in order to uh, create insecurity and uh, create emotions. Hier haben wir Harald Wilimski, auch ein hochrangiger This is Harald Wilimski, a, a high politician from ÖVP, and he is he's an EU delegate. Um, und ist hier auch noch als oppositioneller Österreicher. ist, aber keine Sicherheitspartei, sondern lediglich eine Überwachungspartei. He says uh, he's in the opposition party and he speaks about the ÖVP, which was his opponent then and now is his uh, coalition partner. And he says that um, they want to be a security party, but um, really they're only a surveillance party. Nach dem Nationalen Sicherheitsrat trat Innenminister Sobotka vor die Kameras und erklärte, er gibt auf. After the National Security Council, he, he uh, stood before cameras because the left uh, wing succeeded and all of those, uh, all of those items, after eight months, um, we took them off the table. With 220 people, we, uh, we submitted um, 18,000 uh, comments, and that was the, the biggest um, in Austria and, and with long distance. Was uns vor allem sehr ge auch gefordert und gefordert hat, war, dass dieses and Thema wirklich difficult for us was that, um, es ist ja klar, dass that this topic uh, needed to be discussed. 
Dinge, wo öfter über solche Dinge debattiert wurde, aber es gab mehrere Chefredakteurinnen und Redakteure, die sich dazu geäußert haben. Now we've had um, multiple uh, journalists from uh, that, that uh, wrote about it in their newspapers. Auch in Boulevardzeitungen gezeigt hat, dass die Leute even uh, Boulevard uh, Boulevard papers uh, were talking about it, and we are very proud that we managed uh, ten, uh, we prevented ten of those twelve topics. Wir sind natürlich jetzt nach der Wahl and now it is after the elections, and uh, the whole thing uh, is coming up again. Und Sie können sich noch an meinem Spruch erinnern vor mehreren Monaten, wo ich hier gesagt habe, You can remember my statement from a few months ago, and when I said it's an attack on the security to not do this, if we don't give those abilities to police, then we have a few chances to find the terrorist networks. He repeats the accusations that he made in the beginning of this talk towards you, towards anybody who um, thinks that these kind of measurements are threatening democracy. So he thinks all of you are potential terrorists. Um, since very shortly we have a new government and uh, when the coalition papers were released we, we um, released an analysis of the 180 pages and uh, we far color-coded um, their relevance towards um, cyber security and uh, surveillance and we basically color coordinated by uh, traffic lights so there is uh, gaps in internet communication that are supposed to be closed you basically can see the Trojan horse of surveillance lurking in the corners and that's not all if you remember diesel geras um, there's supposed to be a database where all of your reports from kindergarten over high school to university are supposed to be saved to then be made accessible for potential new employers in the future. And for grown-ups, this is supposed to be introduced within all e-learning classes and there being basically looked at by, oh sorry, I lost my thought there. Um, so, so there's another topic, another bigger topic that's kind of above all of this. This is the third attempt to introduce a third Trojan horse run by the state. And I mean, that raises the question is like, when have we actually finally won? When do they remember? And the tough response to that is that civil rights are not defending themselves. In order to protect our civil rights, our fundamental human rights, we need to be aware, we need to keep up awareness, and there only needs to be one moment of unawareness where that can be taken away from you. The FPÖ that back in the days was so much against surveillance is now in line. This is our new Minister of Inner Defense, Herbert Kickel. Oh, it's basically... Uh, He's basically paraphrasing what the other guy was saying about how it's impossible that threats from outside have these capabilities, technically speaking, but the own government and the own police are um, basically not allowed to access the same kind of technologies to defend themselves. But they've also taken on another rhetoric, um, the one from the counterparty from from the electoral campaigns. So in the first interview that he's given, he was basically quoted saying, if our security is just doing well, all of us are doing well. Funny enough, the website itself that the news was released on is not even under HTTPS security yet.
Oh, the irony. And I mean, obviously, like, what they're thinking about is once again the same bullshit that we've all heard over and over again. To come to a conclusion of this, we would like to talk about our language, the language that we used to have something to be put against the kind of political rhetoric that's been going on. So what we've tried to really made sure was make clear that this is a package of surveillance. And we successfully managed to set these as um, a rhetoric of the media. This was not a security package. This is a package of surveillance. These are all surveillance measurements. So this changing of the narrative was what I want to conclude on, because that, I think, is the aspect of this story that is maybe potentially for all of the people who are interested in this, or even in the private life, is maybe the most useful, the changing of the narrative that we need to make possible. We only, only win the debate on mass surveillance if we change the subject, there is a lot of other measurements that can be undertaken that are a lot better and more effective for security while also still maintaining our own privacy. We need a fact-based politic that is still in line and in accordance with our fundamental human, uh, civil rights. We need to have all these measurements being checked towards their accordance with our constitutional rights. And that's what we can fa thank you on. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Applause from the audience. I don't think we have time for questions, but we have an assembly in Hall 3, right beside EFF and Idri. We're here until day three, and even on day four for a little bit. And we are a donation-based um, association. Um, so please support us, we need it. Thank you so much for listening uh, to the talk, The Language of the Surveillers by Thomas Luninger, Werner Reiter and Angelika Adensamer. The translations today for you did always 10,000. And Merle, um, send us feedback if you have any at C3Lingo or at under the Twitter hashtag C3T. Um,